Now in my last video, I cut the windshield off this half track to put it on another half track. And some people commented that I really should have made a new one rather than cut this one off because um, I'm ruining this half track. But this one's already ruined, and let me show you why. This is an M15A1, which means originally it looked like this. Now the M15A1 was a low volume production and it was unique, particularly the part on the back. Now back here they have that unique turret and there are very few of them made and uh, they're virtually impossible to get these days. They're ridiculously expensive if you can even find one. And this doesn't have any of those parts. They're long gone, which means you really can't restore this half track back to the original condition. Now if this unit was in good shape, it might be worth trying to recreate one of the other model half tracks out of it, but it's not. Here's where the anti-ditching roller should have been. Someone just chopped that right off the frame. Someone actually took off the original nose that slanted and had all the slats. They basically put on a homemade nose here, which is cool, but it's completely not original at all. It doesn't have any kind of historic value. Now let's look inside the cab. It does have a door latch, which I need for my other one. Uh, it's missing a hinge. Let's come inside. Not sure what the seat is from, but it definitely doesn't look like a half track one. Someone has decided to mount a gauge panel here. They slice through the original dashboard to get it to fit. Gas tank's been added here. In order to fit the filler neck, they just torched a hole in the side of the cab. Now let's look at the fit of the cab. This is not comfortable. Technically I do fit, but there's absolutely no back or padding or anything on the seat. Um, and I'm scraping the dashboard here. So this is not something I'd ever want to ride in. The seat has been attached to the floorboards by just welding it straight on. So uh, even if you took out that tank, that seat's not going back easily. Way back when, when I first got these half tracks, I actually started this motor up. I got it running but it knocked and wouldn't build oil pressure. So I shut it down almost immediately. And uh, that thing, at the bare minimum, we're gonna need to pull off the pan and check the rod bearings and make sure they're okay and figure out what's wrong with the oil pump drive. Now normally it's not that bad to check the bearings in a motor or on a vehicle like this, because they're big enough you can just pop the pan off and check the bearings easy without taking the motor out. However, there's a problem. These have a gigantic steel skid plate on them. This is one massive, beefy, formed, really thick, nicely contoured chunk of steel, and that prevents you from taking off this oil pan. And so that was my stopping point on figuring out what was wrong with this motor, and then I've let it sit for well over a decade because it looked like a real pain to work on, and it did not look fun. Got to check if the motor still turns. Yep. Yeah, it still moves. So, motor's still free. So basically, this motor is just a core. Uh, it can be rebuilt, it'll be good for parts, but it's not really good as is. The whole back section here was just torched off. Um, not sure even what used to be here, but um, all the important stuff isn't. Here you can see at some point this roller stopped turning, and the track just rubbed on it that wore that through. So here's a good view of the axles. You can see that one had a little bit of an issue. Even the good side got a little bit twisted up. And the bearings are full of dirt now. Which means I'm not even going to try to fix this one up as is. I'm just going to scavenge all the parts I need for my other build and uh, take the best stuff and put it all on that one. And then I'll figure out something fun to do with the rest of this one. Definitely need a driver's door latch. And this one kind of works. So let's uh, get this out of here. Figure out how to fix it. I think maybe a bunch of oil will help. This might be a good choice. Ultra screw loose. Not just a regular screw loose, an ultra screw loose. Kind of fitting. Let's see how the screw loose did. Oh, ultra screw loose.
It's still moving. Not easy, but it's moving. Keep waiting for this head to snap off, but it keeps going. I think we got it. Here we are. That just slides off here. Maybe. It's supposed to just slide off here. There we go. Every bolt on this thing acts as though it's 80 years old. Weird. This is a good use for an impact screwdriver. There we go. Got a handle. Oh, those are on there. Oh, got one. There we go. Got two. I got a third screw here. Doesn't seem to have a nut on the back side. Let's just hope it pops off easy. Nope. Since the other two are off, maybe we can just turn the whole unit. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Now it's working. That's a stubby little one. You can see the remnants where I did a test fire on this motor. Gas tank going right to the carb. Worked great. Right over the exhaust manifold too, so you know, you're all set. But, it's time to take all that off. Actually, it appears that some of the nuts are already off the carburetor, so I don't have that much to remove. This looks like the great carburetor. Let's clean it up and see what the number says. Once you pull a carb off, you have these gaping holes and uh, that goes straight into your motor. Now I'm not gonna have a carb back on here anytime soon, so I need to cover that up. There's a few options. The rag method, where you stuff rags in the holes, which will let water in, because these are not waterproof. The duct tape method, where you put duct tape over the holes. Now this is kind of waterproof, but it will dry and it will blow away and eventually you'll get water in there. Here's a little sneak peek at an upcoming project, but it's a good example. This 403 Oldsmobile motor has a sheet metal plate that uh, is covering up where the carb used to be. That's a pretty good solution. Or you can do something else. Since you can make any shape you want, instead of a flat plate, I put a peak on it and um, bolt standoffs that'll accept the full length of the bolt and I'll have to tighten them down a million miles. And the rudder will run off like a roof. All right, now 3D printed parts, you usually don't get a perfectly flat bottom. Uh, we got some stray stuff here. A dull, dull knife, I find that would be the best thing to clean them up. You can just kind of scrape along the edge, get the last stray bits. Take a regular piece of sandpaper, throw it on a kind of flat surface. There, we see sanding marks pretty evenly all the way around, no big lumps sticking up. We should have a pretty decent sealing surface. 
now we have a nice little rain cap. I made the length of the standoffs long enough that I basically just have to get the bolt on there. Only takes a couple turns rather than having to thread it all the way. Now I have a nice solid cap. Water is going to go right off it, go off to the sides. That'll be about as good as we can get for keeping water out of this motor. This fender is kind of in the way for working under the hood, so I'm just taking it off. They definitely didn't make this convenient for people working by themselves. It's like they expected a team to work on them. There we go. That'll be a lot easier to get to the motor. I got a drag link socket to help with these um, flat blade bolts here. And uh, it doesn't fit. The blade's too wide. I got one of the smaller ones I could find too. So, it's time to modify this. The socket was getting hot, so I got an extension to hold it with. Let's see how this works. That's a lot better. I think we can work with that. I want to get this passenger seat out, and uh, that's the one that's welded in. I'm going to take the door off to get a little more clearance because it's sort of tricky to get in there. We're going to take a few panels off here. Every bolt seems to be fighting me. I've got a wrench back there holding the nut. And I've been turning this for a while. And it just turns. And the bolt's turning inside the nut. But it doesn't actually unscrew at all. Here you can see the bolt is just turning away inside that nut, but it's not unscrewing at all. So, uh, even though I can turn it, I can't take it out. So, it means I gotta get out the saw. There we go. Looking in the thread there, it actually looks like it was a nut that uh, stripped out. Another interesting difference this little panel here. I've got all the bolts off this bottom panel. It's floppy. This little panel is welded on. Now that's not there on the other half track. This half track doesn't have that panel at all. It's completely missing. There's no marks where it was ever welded. All right. It was welded on, but not very well. That came off real easy. Now it'll be a lot easier to steal parts from that motor. I want to take out this seat so I can have a passenger side. Um, it almost looks like it's easier to remove the floor and then cut off the welds than try to cut off the welds in here. So I got most of it unbolted. Well, I can get to that weld easier. Let me cut that one. Goal here is to salvage all the original panels I can. Another panel. Uh, someone else has cut a hole in it, but saved most of it. There we go. Not sure what that's from. I don't think it was from this, but uh, looks interesting. We'll use it for something. I think if I take this bit off, it'll be a lot easier to get to that uh, rear axle. Good thing everything's fine thread. That way you get to turn it a lot more to take everything off. And rusty. Fine thread and rusty. I think it's actually gonna go. There we go. Ah, one bolt down. I wonder how many hold this thing on. As I was working on this, I sort of get an idea of what the people that were designing it thought. And I realized that huge plate under the motor that I thought was a skid plate, it's not there for protecting the motor from rocks or anything like that. 
There's also armor plating here, armor plating under here to keep bullets from going through the oil pan. I bet that big plate underneath is for landmines. Um, it's a different mindset than I usually think of when I think about vehicles, but it makes total sense if you're building a vehicle to survive getting shot at. Um, you'd armor plate all around the oil pan. And, uh, yeah, and that huge skid plate. That's what it's there for. They weren't worried about off-roading at all. I guess I should have known that, but it's just not something I think of. So I kind of realized that I was going along, and that makes me think about this in a little different light. I just took this onto the passenger side floor. It's kind of interesting. Now this is just sitting inside the footwell here, and this vent was coming out right through that hole. Uh, so it looks like there was some kind of tube attached here, and this is where your feet would be. These, well they look like they're blocking it off, but I look a little further, and it looks like they actually have uh, slots, and they can slide back and forth. And it looks like a cable might have been attached here. Now, uh, someone's welded this closed, so obviously they didn't like it. But I'm wondering if this is some kind of heater where you could open and close these vents and let engine heat in, possibly. Uh, kind of interesting. Maybe it let fumes in, too. That might be why they blocked it off. But uh, kind of interesting the things you see. Started taking off these alternator wires here. I noticed this one, which is going to a terminal, um, it's completely insulation free. Uh, it looks like that actually burned at some point and probably touched that metal. Um, I'm thinking this is not something I want to use as is. I want to pull the cab off this half track so I can really get the stuff underneath easy. But uh, it's going to be heavy. And I know this because that thing is made of flat plates. I've taken off a few of them. They're all really heavy. This entire cab is made up of these flat plates. Now you can see that. That's like a quarter inch thick armor plating with a bunch bolted together that's uh, really gonna be a lot of weight. Now ideally, I'd wanna use that half track with a long winch and boom in order to have the reach and the power and the height I need and to lift that off. Problem is, I took the fuel system apart. I'm waiting for parts to come in to fix it. So that doesn't run right now. The other option is the tow tug, which uh, definitely has the power, but I don't know if it has the height I need to get that all the way off the chassis cleanly. Uh, so that's not going to be an option. Luckily, there's a third option, because I have a forklift. So let's fire up the old Minneapolis Moline forklift. My fourth has decided it doesn't like moving in its own power now. That just raised the level of difficulty up a little bit. Let's see what we can do here.
So now, after 20 minutes, I've taken the hood off that was already unbolted. I've just lifted it off. This may not go quite as easily as I originally envisioned it. Now right here, we have a junction block that connects all the wires that go to the chassis. So I think if I undo that, I'll leave the chassis harness separate, take the body harness with me. Now if you ever need to disassemble your half track, you might find this handy to know. The wiring harness can be separated from the body and the chassis with connectors or terminals, except for one wire. Right here, we have a wire that goes down into a bunch of connectors on the frame all the way to behind the muffler there. Now I know it would probably have been smarter just to cut that wire because I doubt anyone's actually really going to reuse this harness. But I wanted to not cut anything so in case someone does need something like this, they're not making them anymore. The wire actually is in real good shape underneath the outside covering. So um, hopefully this can be reused and it was worth all that effort. I think I'm pretty much ready. I've got all the wires disconnected. I got linkages tied up that could get caught. Remember to get the ground strap, starter wire, all that. And the interior, uh, pedal plates gone. All this stuff is gone. Uh, I think we're ready to go straight up and it'll leave all the controls right here. And uh, hopefully I got all the body mounts. I'm not sure, I got all the ones I could see. But we're gonna try uh, going a little up once I maneuver everything around into position. Fingers crossed, we're gonna see what happens. That bit of body is underneath the clutch pedal. That's my only problem right now. We accomplished it. I got this thing stripped down to the frame. This is their essentials of a half track. It's gonna be a lot easier to take out that hydrovac right now. And this is an interesting thing. This is actually a trailer brake controller. There's a rod going to the brake pedal, controls a variable resistor with the output here. On the dashboard here, 
It actually has a thing for our Empire electric brake. This is uh, whatever gave you the, well, I guess heavy, medium, what kind of percentage braking you want. Disc brake, parking brake. Usually that's just a drum at the end on this era. Maybe it's because disc brakes don't really trap mud. That might have been a, a reliability thing. Those belts are real wide and doubled up, so I'm betting it's redundancy. I think either one of those could power it, but that's in case you lose a belt. A chrome nickel alloy cast right into it. So that's a nice block. Some serious tow hooks. Those came in handy today. Here's the front axle. The motor's back pretty far. Technically, I think this is considered a bit engine because the, the whole motor is behind the front axle center line. Another distinct thing I noticed is there's bolts holding the motor on out here. There's another cross member mounting the motor over here. The transmission has a cross member that's not actually attached. That actually kind of looks like a leaf spring to me. I think that can flex and let the transmission move and the whole thing is really held in by the motor bolts because that's held in at four points, so that can't really move much at all. Battery box mounted to the frame, not the body. And that's it. That's all we got. And that's it for this video. Uh, we have a whole half-track drivetrain. All the spare parts are off it, and uh, I'll figure out some purpose for those. Now I've got a lot of new people subscribed to this channel, and I sure appreciate you guys and welcome aboard. Uh, but if you haven't seen some of my previous videos, I don't waste anything. I thoroughly believe in using the whole carcass. So I'm not going to scrap anything that was on this. Any part that I took off, I'm going to try to find someone that needs it or use it for another purpose. I think this frame can be put best to use with a different body on it. So we're going to do that soon. In the meantime, I got the fun of cleaning up this mess. Hope you guys are having fun with your projects and we'll see you next time.